one of the wonderful data structures in Python that helps us to uh, give return as many values as we have, as we can in, in when we are using the functions compared to the function that only returns just one value. And we have looked at how we can also unpack. We've looked at unpacking by using assignment, uh, tuple assignment, and how we can make it possible for us. I think we have looked at so many things already. We looked at that it's tuples are immutable. And what do you mean by immutable? It means that you cannot change it once it has been assigned, except you reassign them. And I think we have also looked at so many things in on tuple. And I believe that tonight we'll still continue the whole process of tuple. Uh, I'll be sharing my screen shortly. And though I may not really go to that, I think we're using. I told you guys to download Anaconda. It's going to be very important soon. But right now, I think I'll just go to pull out for tonight's class. Let me just see if I still have. OK, so I'll just, OK. I'll be sharing my screen shortly. Session with me. I'm just trying to, I think it's loading. So it's loading. OK, so uh, I'll be sharing my screen now. Okay, so okay, I believe you can see my screen. I believe, please, if you can, let me know. Okay, so I believe you, can, you guys can see my screen. Yes, okay, Mr. Sunder has confirmed that, and I believe everyone has done as well. So I think we looked at, we stopped at two plus, uh, tuples and functions. We looked at the when we looked at the uh, the div mode, we used the div mode to look at the quotient and the remainder, and we did practical examples of the reduce. I remember we used the arcs, uh, the arcs here when we say we wanted this to multiply, and we did that. We used the summation, and we did multiplication as well. When we returned the value, it gave us exactly that. I remember Dr. Kwame asking questions on this, so that that makes me remember as well. So we're about going to uh, the mean and mass. I think we did that this as well. OK. I don't know if we did this. I think we did this. Yes, we did it. <coughs> I want someone to confirm. Did we, did we do the mean, max, and median something? Yes, we did. I'm very sure we did, because at some point, <laughs> Yes, okay, someone said yes. Okay, yes, we did. Okay, so let's just continue. Let's continue from, I think we're about going to zip. Okay, I remember we're about going to the zip function. Um, one, the name, uh, I don't know if you, if I've ever heard of zip functions before, please let us know. If I've ever heard of zip functions before now, please let me know. If I've ever heard of zip function, what do you know about zip function? What do you know about zip functions? Anybody, any at all, just anything from the name zip, what do you think it is? Anybody, anybody that wants to hello. try, okay. Hello, I just want to try. Hello, sir. I think, I think it's the okay. addition and uh, addition in, <laughs> okay. and division in tupu. Du division in tupu, okay. All yeah. right, thank you. Thank you for trying. No problem, we'll find out the, we'll find it out when we're getting there, okay. It's the Sunday as well. I think it's just uh, to combine different inputs, like to make them come together. Okay, all right, that was a nice one. Let's see how that's that's actually wonderful, and that's actually true as well. So let's see how we can. Now we're going to see it practically as well, and we are going to do it right here. So let's see. Uh, thank you for trying. It's always good to try out something and always good to go back and just make some revisions. Please, the reason why I'm posting this class, even with how, with how it is going right now, is because I know if Python is left, if coding is left for some time, it becomes something else. So let's get the fire moving no matter how. And even though we are crawling, let us crawl. Even though we are running, let us run as fast as we are moving. That's the most important thing. So let's get there. So when you mention Z function, 
in Python, most time we need to use list and tuples together, and we learn we will learn Z function to see how we manage this. So Z function takes two or more sequence types parameters. When I said sequence types parameters, look at those ones that are always coming in a sequence. When it comes to maybe like um, we have the like list, tuples, and uh, strings and range and the rest, etc. You can see a lot of them. And it always coming that in order kind of arrangement. So a sequence that we can access the element via what the integer and also implicitly. So these are example of them that we have just mentioned. Okay. So we're going to use zip here. So zip takes the corresponding element with the same indices from the parameters. It returns them as zip objects containing tuples. So for example, now <coughs> sorry. So for example, now we have text equals to x, y, z, 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 t. This is a string for sure. It is a sequence character, is a sequence data type, and a list also one, two, three, four. So if we zip the text and the list, how are we going to make that possible? So how do we do that? We call out the zip function. You can see we name it, give it a, a new variable, and by the time we give it a new variable, we said okay, equals to zip inside what text. From a a list that means we are bringing this x y z t and a underscore list into this particular z function and putting it inside what open and close bracket by the time we print this variable that we have defined we can see that it is being stored as an object as an instance of a particular uh, a, a class so when we get to object oriented programming we understand this whole concept now it is being stored as an object and this is the location in which it's been stored at, okay? So uh, when he said that zip object is an iterator, that means an object which can be looped what we can loop over it. It's an object which can you can loop over it. So let's loop over this particular zip uh, object that we have defined here, zip underscore obj, okay? So let's say for z, in this particular variable, which we have defined zip object, zip underscore obj, we print, I think, why did I bring obj? I think, okay, but back then, okay. So we print z. So by the time we print z, you can see that the the two things that came in here, the text and the list, has become mm -hmm. what has become together. You can see here, you say for z in, in zip object here, print z, you can see that x is, is now been meshed with what one, y as taken with two, z as taken with three, and t as taken with four. You can see right now. So as you see, each element in the zip object is a tuple. You can see all of them are tuples. Why? Why are they tuples? Because they are in a what in a in a parenthesis, the normal bracket separated by comma. You can see each of them are tuples. So as you can see, each is in the zip is in a tuple. First element. Is from the string. Second element is from the list. Now, see what I tried doing here is try to uh, maybe want to get the index of this particular uh, zip object that you have done. If you can see, so <clears throat> as see zip object is not subscriptable. That means you cannot add, get, get the value of it using this particular format of indexing. Okay. So, how can we do that? We have to convert it to what? You cannot directly access the elements of zip object. So what do we do? What are we doing here? Is anybody? What can someone tell me about this line one? What what happens on this particular line one here? Someone can tell me what happens. What has been done there? Anybody? Just raise up your hand. Okay, Mr. Sunday was okay. Someone's hand should be up. Okay, Doctor Payme. Yes, we are trying to make it into a list. Fantastic. We are changing it to a list so that we can be able to. So that we can now do whatever we want. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. So we are looping through that list. And why are we doing that? It was a tuple before. So we're changing it to a word. Anytime we zip, the zip returns tuple. So we want to change it to a list. And how do we do that? By defining on that variable and just say list equals to list into this particular variable which we want to that is a tuple by the time we call out this zip list it's going to return what we 
we're supposed to do. I'm supposed to have connected this and run it as well. So uh, you may ask, de definitely the answer will definitely give us the values here. Guys, I, I know I'm supposed to, let me, okay, let me just go and let's, let me connect this. Let me run this. So it's initializing and it's connected. So let me run this first one. <coughs> Sorry. So we run this one as well. We now run this one will give us an error. So there's no need of running. So we run this. So now you can see now it asks you, you may ask, how is it how is this possible that we already look over it and it returned a list of tuples? What happened here? Okay. Okay, I'm trying to get something here. So yes, you are right, but you can look over an illustrator only once. So title will okay, let me try to uh why is it not coming out here? Okay, I'm trying to get I'm trying to check out something here. Okay. So uh, this particular thing is just trying to tell you that you can only look through a particular of uh, tuple once. I don't know why it's it's supposed to because you have changed it. Though let me just check why. Yes, you're right. You can you can look over an illustrator only one piece. Pattern will stop illustrating to reach the end of illustrator. That's necessary to prevent infinite looping. Yes. Why I'm just trying to know why it's not great. Okay. Okay. Okay, it's supposed okay. Guys, do you know what, what is going on here? Let's see what what is going on here. Let's let's check. Let's as it is right now. That's what I want to do right now. Let me just um let's let's ask Google right now. What what happens here? So we can see something like this. Uh, what should we type in Google to ask this kind of question? Because I believe it's supposed to have given us an outcome, but because we just converted it from a tuple to a list is supposed to have returned a particular kind of data for us. So let's ask Google why. Uh, what what do we do here, guys? Let's confirm. What do you think we did here? We converted uh, zip to... object to list. Okay, zip object to list and it did not print. Why? So let's ask Google about that. Zip object converted to list, but not showing output, but showing an empty, showing an empty list okay but okay but showing okay but showing an empty list zip object converted to list but showing an empty list so we search okay so there's there are answers here so let's Take the, let's take the first one here. The first one is from Stack Overflow. So the, the guy asked this question, okay, okay? After I zip two lists, I print the option of it, I get the desired purple. When I wanted to make another list from the zip, I get an empty list. Why this is happening? Code. Okay, the person showed the code. So there were two answers. Okay, zip returns and it let, and please mute yourself. Zip returns an iterator object. The first time you convert it into a list, the, the iterator is consumed. 
And after that point, it is MC. You will get the behavior expect if you convert it immediately and then copy it. Okay, guys, you see the outcome of it now. You see what happens now. I think this has happened, but I think it just keep my memory at some point. So, sorry. So, as you can see, this answer has been ticked. So, what happens? The zip returns an iterator object. The first time you convert it to a list, the iterator is consumed. So that it will, I think this was what I was even stating before that the iterator is iterator is consumed. So it will not go into an infinite loop. And after the, that point, it is empty. You will get the behavior you expect if you convert it to a list immediately and then copy it. So this is what we could have done. Immediately we finish it, we just copy that particular uh, zip that we have done into, you copy it like now, let's for example, uh, let's see something like this. So immediately we converted this uh, to a list, we could have put this zip list as a copy. So let's see, let's, uh, let's go back to the code. This is a practical example. So let's go back to the code. You can see, but I'm going to say, okay, we can decide to do this. We can decide to do this, control C, and we come to this place and decide to say, okay, let's add another block of code here. And what do we do? Control V here. And instead of putting results here, we are putting, guys, what should we put here? What do you think we should put zip here? Object. Zip object. No, it's not zip object. It's not zip object. We have converted it. We have converted it to a list by defining it inside this variable. Okay, zip list. Zip list. So let's see. Let's confirm that zip underscore list. Okay. So by the time we are supposed to run this and say okay. Now let's let's add another code here and say okay. Uh, results results underscore list. Okay. So you can see it's not it's not working for us. Why is this so? Who can tell us why is this so? Because I think you need to copy again. Yes. We need to copy it immediately because see what happens. They said if you get this behavior, you expect it, you expect you expect if you convert it to the list immediately and then copy it. So we are not doing it immediately. That's why it's not working for us at some point. So let's just try and make it immediately as we where's that list? Uh Is this showing the same thing. So maybe we'll, we'll find we'll find out more solutions to this because I believe uh, what I said here was you are right, but you can look over an illiterate only once. Okay, I think this is okay. Okay, I get it now. So what is happening right now is I can remember what happens here. So it's supposed to be only once, except if I want to get this right, so what will happen here? I have to start all over again, look things over. So this particular one happens only once i don't know if you understand what is what they're asking right now what they're telling me right now anybody hello so i'm supposed to have done this only once like this this illiterator iterator is supposed to be only once except i have to go back and define this all over again so if if it, at that first time I did, uh, what do you call it? I did this, I converted it to a list. And before I ran it, I put it inside a what, a copy, and then run the result of that copy. You could have done it at that first time. But since I've done it over and over again, that's what this statement is telling you on Stack Overflow. So a function that is an iterable, assigning the results is not going to be useful in many cases. Where is that place we said? You will get the behavior you expect if you convert it to a list immediately and then copy it. So you can see that we did it over. We have already looked through it already. So it's not going to work for us except we define it again. 
I don't know if someone can actually try it out there whenever he or she uh, tries to get over it again. Is there anybody that wants to say something? Or should we move on around? Or we should go back and let's do this okay, and let's work I, for I think maybe you have studied in the memory. So yes, exactly, you be able exactly. To do it again. Yes, okay. exactly. So we could have done it that first time. I think that's that's what he's just trying to tell us right now. Is what he's trying to tell us that. But nevertheless, we are still going to we are still going to make that possible. So let's just continue uh, with this. We will still see a practical example. Now you can see it here. So let's see how we can make this work for us. So. Uh, yes, you are right. You can look over an illustrator only once. Python will stop illustrator once you reach to the end of it. And the necessary to prevent infinite looping. Why is doing that is because it wants to prevent infinite looping. You need to look through over the illustrator more than once. You can assign it to a list. Okay, so you see what is going to happen right now. So we can see um, this is D1 and D2, A, B, C, D, E, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. New underscore zip equals two. Now, this is where we are zipping these two together. Now, we are doing the same thing. Now, you can see now this particular one we are printing. We are printing this at first. So, we, you see, you can, it is stored at a particular object. Now, the same thing that we did here, uh, we, we called it out here. Zip underscore list equals to list. Let me let me run this as well so that I will know I know where the error is coming from, why it's behaving that way. So this one works. This one works as well. Now this is exactly the same thing that we did. Wait. Okay, this I'm getting things wrong here. Okay. Uh let me see where we actually got it wrong here. So let's go back. Trying to make sure that I make sure things are in place. So this was the same thing we did here. Zip is equals to this, and it came out with it came out perfectly. We looked through it and it brought us this. And by the time we tried to assess this, it didn't work for us. Okay. Now the same thing we are going here. All right, we do here, we do here, okay, and we put this in a zip. Fantastic. Now, the next thing we are doing here is, okay, 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 so, so guys, is there anybody that can explain what is going on here? Just try to put in your problem solving skills between the difference between this and this. Why is this one running and this particular one is not running? Hello, Mr. Adrian. Yes, Mr. Oko, I can hear you. The, the, I think the difference is in the first one you looked, you did the four loop first before you converted the two lists. But the second one, you did converted okay. the two lists before you looked. Fantastic. Well done. Nice, nice observation as well. Nice one. So the first one, this particular one, we we did this zip. We now did what? Printed it out, it's stored at the particular one. Now, this particular one, we look through it before we now said, okay, we want to now convert it to a list. Okay, I think this was what happened. So, by the time we now, where is it? Set this, this, okay. Zip underscore list equals to list object. So, Mr. Uko, which side did you say we did? Let's, let me, let me hear you talk to us. Okay, in, in, in this you know, you okay. after, uh, after performing the zip, you converted to it to a list before you now uh, did a for loop on the zip list. But in the first one, you went ahead to uh, create the for loop before converting it to a list. Okay, all right, okay, I think that's. That's what I'm observing here. It's been a while I did this, so I'm just trying to look at it again. So anybody that wants to add uh, something again? I have another observation. I'm looking at the way you define the, I think D1 and D2. They, for okay. the first one, if you go up, the, okay. the 
XY, Z, okay. I think okay. it was in form of a text. It's it was a not string separated. A, 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 okay. a string. So, and uh, the other one was actually the string as well, but separated with commas. So, okay. I'm just thinking maybe that will have been the issue. I don't know. I'm just thinking. Okay, it's okay. We're going to find it out tonight, at least this few minutes that we have. So this particular one, as I said, I think I dropped a message here. The first element is from the string. The second element is from the list. I think that's one of the first things that we, we got it all, all wrong here in this particular one. But this other one, I can see that, you can see something here that, excuse me, uh, that this particular one is, D1 is from a, a list, and D2 is also from a list. So by the time we print it to an object, and we change, remember that once you zip, the zip always returns an object in form of a tuple. And by the time we said zip underscore list equals to list, please mute yourself, please. List equals to zip underscore list equals to, we are changing this new zip that we have put here in this particular line four to, uh, to a list. By the time we now assess that list, it, it came out perfectly for us. That's that that was the this is the difference between this this particular one and the other one here. I think that's so because this particular one did not come out at some point because I believe if the first element is from the string and the second one is from the list as well. And also we did not go through this particular copy immediately we had to put it inside an illustrator kind of uh, package. But well, this other one is, is different. If you need to loop over a literator more than once, you have to, you can assign it to a what a, a list. The answer here is very perfectly for us. I can remember now. So we can see this particular one is what? Mr. Saunders actually got it right. So the, this particular first one, we are finding the, uh, the way and the answer to this. This particular first one is what? This one is a string, okay? This one, this particular first object, that the first one here is a string. But this other one, we have stated it clearly. I can remember it now perfectly. Sometimes it's been a while I did this. So if you need to loop over the literature more than once, so that it will not give us a, a what they call it, an empty list, you can assign it to a list. You can see here we started this D1 as to a what? A list. This D2 is also a list. So by the time we zip this, you can see here you print new underscore zip, and by the time you print it, it's going to store it as an object as well. But once you assess this list, since both of them came in from a, 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 a part of list, okay, it's going to return the, the, the as them as list, but in form of what? A tuple inside of what? A list. So let me go back to that stack overflow and, and see their codes as well. Let's, let me go back to the question the person asked. Okay, I want to know why the person said we should copy this and leave the other one. So uh, let me let's ask, let me see. After I zip to list and print the object as a list, I get the desired output, but I wanted to make another list from the zip object and get an empty and, and get an empty list. Why is this happening? Okay, so let's see what will happen here if we try to run this particular one again. So let's go back to the code. Let's go back to this code. Let me go back to it. Uh, let's run this. Let's run this. Hello. Hello. Sorry, yes, I'm... I think what the, person is, what the person is doing there, I think he, he wanted to copy the SIP list already. Want to copy it to the new one, <coughs> so okay. I think maybe that is what he's doing. So, like in our own case, we are not copying. If uh, he wanted to copy, so but the one they copy is giving him a mm. list. So he said okay. he had two lists actually that he see, and the output is coming out. But when they copy it, the the copy list is giving empty. So I think that is what is is doing. Okay, that is actually, it's actually a nice observation too, but has anybody observed what has just happened right now? I 
I don't know if I just observe what happened now. When I change this to a list that is a zip or it, that was a zip uh, two people, if I run this now, something was here before, guys. Dr. Koyemizan is up. Okay. Uh, can I speak? Sorry. Yes, yes, you can. Okay, I think the major difference between the first one and the second one is just for the fact that we already looked through it before trying to convert it to a list. Yes, like you said, this kind of uh, um, this kind it's of uh, code, only, you can only iterate through it once, and I think once. looking through That's it, we've used we've we've used our one chance to. Actually, yes, exactly. If you want to, before looping through it, you have to turn it, convert it to a list first, and then copy it out. Otherwise, it will not work. It will return an empty, empty uh, list. Uh, so we list. can try that. So, I think it will work okay. if you try that. Yeah. Now it has actually showed us the, the actual facts. Here we can see here we have seen it ourselves. So this is a list as this other guy has said on this Stack Overflow. He did this, and the first output he gave was exactly this. But when he, he looked, he went to uh, find the answer again. The iterator, iterator does itself. It, it doesn't have to go into a for loop. Yes, I'm trying to get some things now. I'm remembering some things now. So it doesn't have to go to a for loop to even try to even say they're looping. It's automatically on its own. Like it goes through its own once and for all. So you can see here, this guy's first output on Stack Overflow here. You might have something like this as well. Maybe I'm going through a challenge. And you get to see something like this. See what happens here. He has gone through this code the first time. This was the output of it. He got one, comma one, two, comma two, three, comma three. But when he looked, when he saw he ran the, uh, this thing again to get the output, he got an empty list. The same code. Okay. So that was why that was when this guy now said. That was when this guy now said, okay, let me put it into a copy and. I drew it immediately. So if you can see our code here, the same code that gave us values here, I'm very sure it gave us values. I'll be ending the class soon, I'm sorry. But uh, if you see the same code that gave us value here, you can see now it has given us value, you can see right now. But if you run it again, it gives us an empty list. So that is a practical example of what this guy is trying to tell us right now. So at this particular point, I would like to say, okay, let's just pause here for tonight. Let's just go back and put, digest this thing inside our head at some point. Me, I'm even, after a while, I'm just observing this for a while. And I thought I would just come and just remember some. But this one was actually a technical one. But we have been able to figure it out by ourselves. You can see exactly what this other Stack Overflow guys did. You can see it gave us an empty list. So whatever I could have done right now, I could have just to. Uh, copy it immediately and put it in another list. Now it has become empty. You can see here, it has become empty. So if you can see there, let's run it again. We go here, we run it again. It gives us a value, yes? Fantastic. But if you run this same list again, it gives us something empty. Okay, so it, so it could have been at this point that we ran there first time that we could have copied it so that to you will to store it and separate it from the main zip list itself. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to do. I don't know if anybody yes. gets what you're trying. Yes, just, Mr. Sunday, do you understand it now? Yes, yes, yes. Are you sure? <laughs> okay. I think Emily, you are you with once us? It, uh, when, once it once iterates, <laughs> the first iteration. Yes, once. Yes, if you, do, exactly. if you do it again, it will give you empty yeah. list. It will give us an empty list because it sees an iterator. That's how it's been designed to work. So anytime you give us the results of that list, we should have we should copy it immediately. So by the time you copy that once and you store it another way, so that one is quite different from the main zip list. The other one is the copied one that you have done. So I don't know if you get it now. <laughs> Please, anybody has here ask questions about this case? Any question?
Dr. Solomon, you're not saying anything. Is there any oh, there are no questions? Hello, good evening, Akemi. Apologies yes, for evening, coming sir. late. But I okay. don't have any question. Okay. But at least you understand at least some things here. Yeah? At least <laughs> Yes. I am good. Okay. All right. Mr. Mano, anybody that has doubts, please bring out your doubts. Let's let's squash it here, please. It's very important that you understand this concept. Mr. Funso. Are you with us? I'm with you, sir. Okay. Yeah, Are we okay? So we got. I can meet yourself. Thank you. Wherever you are, please meet yourself. So we saw that we got into a, a, a little misunderstanding here, and we got to figure out how we can have made it possible for us. So we see the the the, the part of uh, you can look over an illustrator. I wrote it down years ago. I don't know. You can look over an iterator only once, only once. And people will stop, uh, Python will stop iterating when you reach to the end of the literator. That's necessary to prevent infinite looping. So that's what we did. So exactly as I, I, I showed you guys on Stack Overflow, we did a practical presentation to see how we can actually overcome this. Then we forget some things while coding. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, please ask. So we end the class right now. Any questions? All right, thank you guys for joining. It could have been longer than this, but I'm still trying to get myself back up. Uh, we'll be fully ready. I think on, on Wednesday I'll be strong enough. All right.